and I will turn it on over here to Kush. All right, can everyone hear me okay? Great, I uh, have to do a mic check nowadays with the virtual meetings. Um, well, uh, thanks so much for that, Amanda and Jennifer. Really appreciate um, everyone getting together. I know it's late on a Friday, so I will keep this short. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Kyush Kumar. I'm the Acting Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary at the Department of Energy over the Office of Cybersecurity, Energy Security, and Emergency Response. Um, the shorthand we go by is CSER. Um, and so we, CSER is an all hazard shop. We're looking at everything that could disrupt energy supply, everything from cyber attacks to physical attacks to nuclear electromagnetic pulses, uh, geomagnetic disturbances, and yes, uh, hurricanes, wildfires, tornadoes, and all those other natural hazards that we're worried about. So, so we're looking at all of those hazards and, it, and how do we actually work to mitigate uh, those impacts to the U.S. energy sector? And so um, we work very closely with uh, various stakeholders, and that is we work with the private sector, so actually the energy companies out there on mitigating these risks. We work with um, uh, states on uh, developing energy assurance planning. We work with the interagency, and that includes the Department of Homeland Security, uh, the FBI, and of course, the intelligence community. Um, one of the key things that we focus a lot of our time on is cybersecurity. How could you not? Um, if you, you've been watching the news, you've seen the disruption with the Colonial Pipeline. You've seen the JBS hack, and then um, more recently, the Kaseya hack. And so this is just at the top of mind for us at the department um, and across the federal government. This is a priority for not only um, our secretary, Secretary Granholm, but also the president. Uh, this is uh, an important national security issue, but it's also an economic security issue. Uh, speaking of the colonial incident, um, it was our office uh, and uh, my team of dedicated uh, federal employees who actually led the charge on the response efforts related to that colonial hack. And so we worked very closely with uh, colonial um, from both the cyber perspective, um, but also the energy supply perspective. And that's what I think makes us unique as an office is we're really looking at how can a cyber uh, attack manifest itself in actually dis a disruption of energy supply in the country. And what can we do to actually mitigate that type of an event? And so to that end, we, we engage in a lot of, we certainly do a lot of policy and work with the National Security Council and the White House on policies that we should be advancing. Um, but also part of my team is looking at developing tools and technologies. How do we develop the next generation tools to actually uh, detect cyber adversaries in either the IT environments or increasingly more in the operational technology or industrial control systems environments. How do we start to do that? Um, how do we develop um, technologies uh, to actually block or deter uh, cyber incidents from happening? Um, and then of course, our, our last portion of our uh, organization is the response organization. So we respond um, in the context of a cyber incident, we'll work with uh, DHS um, and the FBI very closely to actually support response efforts of um, any, any entity that is impacted by a cyber incident in the energy sector. So this is something that is really important to us. Um, and with all of these cyber incidents happening, another portion of what's really, really important to us and important to me personally is the importance of cybersecurity and workforce development. Um, if, if, you've been, if you've heard the statistics, the reality is we don't have enough cybersecurity experts in the United States. And then when you take a look at that uh, group of cybersecurity experts, and then you say, all right, I need you to now have expertise in operational technologies. Um, that's a smaller pool. And then when you shorten it even more to say, it's not just any OT technologies, um, I need you to know OT technologies in the energy sector, so SCADA systems. An actual, um, how does the electric power or the oil and natural gas networks uh, control energy systems uh, that are actually controlling the flow of um, oil in the case of Colonial or the electric grid or the integration of renewable energy. This is all connected. And so as we start to think of, particularly as we're headed as a grid with this clean energy grid of the future, 
the reality is it's going to be a much more connected grid. It's going to be a much more transactional grid. And so how do we actually start to protect some of those systems? And what we need for that is not only the tools and tech, but we need the people. And we need the, the workforce of tomorrow to really tackle these challenges and come work with us, not only at the department, at the national laboratories like Argonne, but also with the industry in the States. Uh, there's a real need for that expertise. And so that's why I'm extremely uh, glad to be here with you today and uh, glad that you all are participating in um, uh, the, th this effort today. So since 2016, uh, uh, at the Department of Energy, we've been working with Argonne National Laboratory and um, other national laboratories to host uh, the CyberForce competition. Um, really, CyberForce is looking at that next generation of energy cybersecurity professionals um, and really showing students and the cutting about the cutting edge work happening at DOE and the national laboratories and encourage students to pursue cybersecurity as a career um, so that we can keep driving innovation in this area. Uh, this year, though, the CyberForce competition has grown from the successful uh, competition, the cyber defense competitions we've been having that are held in November uh, to also include two Conquer the Hill competitions. Uh, the Adventure Edition, which we're all here for today, and the Rain Edition, which will be held in September. Uh, now, as I mentioned, this is going to continue to be a priority, and that's why it's so important that um, that we are in this together and we're working with you on um, being part of these competitions. Um, the, the other thing I'll mention about this competition is um, we've been able to bring in over 300 colleges and university students in competing in this event. Um, and we wanna continue doing more of this. Um, also, what I'm looking forward in particular to this event is seeing how each of you will work hard and really strive to reach to the top um, by really completing as many challenges as possible. And having actually been out to Argonne and seeing the CyberForce competition um, and uh, seeing some of the, the, the challenges that they put out before in previous competitions, I'm sure they're gonna be challenging for this, but I also know that um, many of you will overcome those challenges because you have the uh, the, the ingenuity, the, the creative nature to actually address some of these things. So um, we're counting on you. Um, really, you are the next generation of cyber defenders. And I, you know, I challenge you to continue growing these skills. Um, I'm certainly biased being at the Department of Energy and spending my entire career in the energy sector, electricity sector. Um, but I really do think that within the electricity sector and um, looking at cyber challenges of the sector is so critical, not just because um, um, electricity and the power industry and the energy sector are so unique, but the reality is every other sector depends on the availability of electricity. Um, without electricity, we, we couldn't have this conversation in a virtual environment. And so we like to call ourselves the one of the more essential sectors in the United States. Without us, you couldn't have the other sectors do their thing. And so it is so important to really have the, the best and the brightest be part of this. And so to that end, I'm really glad you're part of this competition. And um, I really hope that this competition, the Conquer the Hill competition, really inspires your future career aspirations. Um, I'll put a, a, a quick pitch out. DOE, um, my organization here, we're, we're looking at internships, we're looking at fellowships, um, and really trying to grow the uh, a cyber talent of the future. So if any of those are of interest to you, definitely reach out to the ANL team um, and they'll connect you with us. But we're gonna be looking at doing a lot of that and bringing a lot of talent into the department as well. Um, with that, let me just say thank you again. Thank you for joining us and good luck to you all. And I look forward to hearing about the outcome. Thanks, Poosh. He also neglects to say that it's really nice to know that uh, he started and actually, like I said, it was at Argonne in, I think, 2017. Um, so it, it's super nice to, to have him come back around here and, uh, you know, full circle here with us again. Um, so thank you again. And um, so for those of you who, who don't know me, I'm Amanda Joyce. I lead the, the larger CyberForce program efforts here at Oregon National Laboratory. 
Um, so you probably got a lot of emails from me over the course of the program here um, for this. Uh, I wanted to kind of do a quick welcome as well to kind of follow up on what Poosh had stated. Um, Conquer the Hill is one of our new series here under the CyberForce program. And I'm super excited for it this year because instead of, um, for those of you who have taken part in CyberForce competition, it really looks at um, a holistic view in a very short time period in getting students to understand skill sets across a plethora of areas. But what's unique about the Conquer the Hill is that we get to really narrow in on skills. And so in the adventure edition, we're, we're getting to really kind of have you focus on an area in the Cyberforce competition that we like to call the anomalies. Um, and so I'm super excited to have it. The Cyberforce program is growing immensely here in 2021. As was stated, we were really excited for two Conquer the Hill uh, competitions. We still have our main event, Cyberforce competition, coming up here in November as well. We have a virtual career fair for those that are participating in any of our Cyberforce program. We have a workforce portal that's being worked on that'll be uh, gone live here in November as well. And we have our webinar series that's monthly. So, you know, we have tons of activities just for 2021 and we look forward to 2022. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn this over to Jennifer so she can kick off letting you guys all kind of know what's going on with this particular competition for you. Jennifer? Thank you, Amanda. Can everyone hear me okay? Can I get a thumbs up on the, the chat? Or Amanda, can you hear me okay? I can sure hear you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> thank you uh, to people in the chat. Cool. So hello, everyone. Um, if you are a competitor that has, uh, you know, joined our competitions in the past, you might be familiar with me. My name is Jennifer Fowler. I am the anomalies lead for the Cyberforce competition. Um, I reside at Argonne National Laboratory, and I'm in Amanda's group. So it's nice to virtually meet all of you. Um, Amanda, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Thank you. So I just wanted to give everyone kind of a bit of an overview. As Amanda stated, this is an, an anomalies only competition. So um, if we've had competitors in prior years, this is going to be a little bit different than the overall um, uh, Cyberforce competition. This is just focused on anomalies. So to that effect, our, we have a different scoreboard since we don't need to have all the uh, scanning and all the other elements that the larger scoreboard uh, kind of comprises. So we have a different scoreboard or game board this year. And um, to access that scoreboard, you're going to go to that URL listed on this slide here, but that will only be available uh, starting at 5 p.m. on July 16th. So um, that will go live for competitors during that time. And you'll also receive an email from us uh, letting you know that the scoreboard is open in case you don't set a uh, calendar invite for yourself. Um, we will also email you some essential details, um, including um, the password for the zipped dependency file. And I'm going to talk about that, I think, on the next slide. Or maybe not the next slide. It's, it's somewhere in this slide deck. So um, I'll talk more about dependency files later on in this uh, slide deck. But this is kind of the colors are going to change. But this is a, a ideally what the scoreboard is going to look like. If you're familiar in our prior competitions, we always map things to the NICE framework. Um, and we map them to the seven categories that they have. You can see them at the top, securely provision, operate and maintain, oversee and govern, protect and defend, analyze, collect and operate, and investigate. So if you are a new competitor this year, no worries. Um, if you're kind of not sure what to expect, I uh, recommend that you go to the NICE framework site and you can kind of browse those categories and, and brush up on maybe some skills if you would like to be a little bit more prepared for the, this uh, anomaly competition. Um, so this is just a general overview of the anomaly scoreboard. Um, you can see the participant score is uh, located at the upper left. This is an individual based competition. So you will not be able to see other uh, competitors scores like you can in the larger competition. Um, this is just focusing on how well you as an individual can do and answer as many of these anomalies as you wish or choose to. Um, and so you can see your individual score in the upper left there. Um, you can select any anomaly on this game board. This is kind of like a Jeopardy game board. Um, the number on the tiles indicate the amount of 
points that that anomaly is worth. We have easy, medium, and hard. Easy is worth 20 points, medium is 50, and um, hard is worth 100 points. And you can see um, each category kind of has a pretty good blend of easy, medium, and hard. Um, some have more than others. So you might want to be more strategic and go for the harder ones, or you can hop all around the board. It's really up to you. Um, you are allowed multiple attempts per anomaly. Um, the number of attempts may vary, but in general, it's about three attempts per anomaly. Some of the more difficult ones may have five. Some of the very easy ones may have one or two attempts. So just be sure that you are being careful when you're entering in the information because it is a limited amount of attempts. And um, like I mentioned before, the point allotment is on the outside tile. Next slide. Thank you. So. Now I talked about the outside tile where it's kind of um, identifying how many points that anomaly is worth. On the inside, you'll be able to actually see when the, the tile flips, you'll be able to see the um, anomaly. I obviously redacted it for, for this. I'm not giving any freebies out just yet. Um, so when you select the tile, it will pull up the question. You can do the answer, so, uh, put the answer in, and it tells you how many attempts you have left. Um, clicking on the tile will activate the question. To answer the question, you just type the response into the answer box. Um, it is not case sensitive, but it is sensitive to spelling. So make sure you are putting in the spaces correctly. You're, um, you know, spelling things correctly. So, uh, you know, capitalization is fine. You don't have to worry about that, but please make sure you're spelling things correctly. If you submit an answer that is incorrect, the user will see an incorrect answer message pop up, and then your amount of attempts will decrease each time you um, put an incorrect answer into the answer box. Um, next slide, please. Oh, actually, one thing I wanted to mention on the last slide too, sorry about that, Amanda. Um, you'll be able to see uh, on in the box, it says securely provision, that's the anomaly category. And then you see that it says anomaly 21. That will link back to your zipped dependency file that you'll receive the password to, to unzip it um, uh, uh, at the start of the competition. So that is a good way to figure out what dependency file is linked to what anomaly uh, is by looking in that upper left-hand corner. Next slide. Thank you. So speaking of dependency files, all competitors will have access to the dependency files no later than 48 hours prior to the competition. Um, it's highly recommended that you download the zipped file prior to the start of the competition. You don't want to have to be waiting on it to download in the competition starts. So just download it as soon as you gain access. And then the dependency zip is password protected. So you will receive that password at the start of the competition. Once you receive that password, unzip it and all of the files will be there and the dependency information will be within um, each anomaly has its own dependency uh, folder, so you'll be able to see that. Some anomalies do not have dependency uh, folders if it's kind of like an open source question or a trivia question. So there won't be uh, a folder for every anomaly, but an anomaly that has a dependency will have a folder. Next file or slide, sorry. <laughs> okay, the rules. It is important to note that if you try and brute force the scoreboard, um, you will be disqualified. You know, this is um, something that's supposed to be fun, a learning experience, so uh, do not attack the scoreboard. Um, please only use the help desk feature if you have a technical problem with either the dependency file or logging onto the scoreboard. Um, if you're stuck, maybe then, you know, phone a friend or something, but we're, we're really not there to help you solve the anomaly. We're there for technical problems. Or if you think you have the correct answer and you really, you know, it's something that you want to make sure that, you, you know, you are, maybe you think you're correct or we're incorrect, you can email us then, but um, try and keep that help desk feature for technical problems only. Uh, competitors will have multiple attempts to answer the anomalies, as I mentioned on the prior slide. And so you just make sure spelling is correct, you know, maybe spell check it before you submit your answer. Next slide. Thank you. Um, and so with some more logistics here, um, you have 48 hours to answer as many anomaly challenges as you would like to answer. Um, you're not required to be online for the full 48 hours. It's not a marathon. Um, so you, know, you can answer them in any order for as long as you would like. Um, there are no timed questions in this competition. Um, some trivia questions were timed in prior competitions. That is not the case for this competition. Um, however, most questions have a three attempt limit. So 
that is pretty much the overview for the anomaly competition. This is very focused on just anomalies. Um, you don't have to worry about keeping an ICS up. You don't have to worry about securing any infrastructure. This is just for you to enjoy the puzzles and challenges and reverse engineering that you know, you've come to know and love with our CyberForce competition. Um, with that being said, do we have any questions? Feel free to, um, you can unmute or put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Um, I see a question in the chat. It says, do multiple attempts mean lesser points? Um, no, I don't believe we're, I don't believe we're decreasing the amount of points um, if you have an incorrect uh, attempt. And then there's another question. You mentioned preparing for anomalies at NICE. So what I meant by that would is just if you feel that you need some extra practice prior to the competition, what you can do is you can go to the NICE framework, they have a keyword search. You can also look it up by category. So maybe you feel a little unsure of your abilities in the analyze category for the NICE framework. They have what kind of knowledge, skills, and abilities you should know to be successful in answering those types of um, kind of anomalies based off of that category. So you can brush up on things by going to the NICE framework website, looking at the different categories, and then seeing if you feel comfortable with the different knowledge, skills, and abilities listed within each category. Um, let's see what other questions. <clears throat> I came in late. Will this recording be shared later? Yes, it will be. Are there any tool suites or applications required to complete the challenges? That's a good question. I would recommend that you have things like Kali, um, you know, ready to go on your uh, in your environment. Um, I I don't think you need anything like Ida Pro. Um, most, you know, whatever you whatever you may think you may need, I would just say, go ahead and, and get that loaded onto your environment to make sure that you're successful. I know you're gonna need some tools in Kali, so maybe set up an environment with that. Um, other than that, I don't think you need any um, specific uh, tools or software other than what's available in Kali. Um, like password cracking stuff you may need. So, you know, those types of things that are readily available in Kali is probably a good thing to have on your environment. Um, are there any tools? Okay, I answered that one. Is the scoring going to be weighted by the number of people who have solved the question or by those who solved it quicker? Uh, it just, I'm not sure I really understand that question, but basically the winner will be the person that has the highest score. Um, there are no partial credits, either all or nothing. So the person that answers the most correctly with the highest score will win. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I answered that. How is the rank determined question? Um, can I log in from more than one device simultaneously? Ooh, I don't know the answer to that. Um, Amanda, do we have anything against multiple logins? Uh, I guess the question for Brandon is, are you talking about into the scoreboard? Um, I, we can double check on that for you. Um, but I'm guessing that there's probably not, um, but to yes. be mindful that it might not work the greatest for you on doing a dual login. Yeah, I think it's limited to one, but we can check for sure. Um, and then another question is, what can we list th this event as in our resume? Good question. Um, Amanda, do you want to take that? Um, so, uh, sure. Um, so I think in years past, people have put um, in their extracurriculars, um, they put Cyberforce competition down and they put as a participant. Um, so you're, you're more than welcome to do that on your resume and we can obviously verify that with them. Uh, the goal on this again is at the end, um, you know, it won't be a speedy Gonzalez, but our hope is to still get you kind of a, a semi report card out of, you know, what your proficiencies are with this. Um, so you'll also be able to kind of um, be able to answer or, or provide out kind of where you were, did really good on it, if that's a question for you or an interest for you. Um, so yeah, I would suggest doing it on an extracurricular arena. 
Thank you, Amanda. Another question is, will there be any sample questions given out before the start? I'm gonna tip my hand. We have released a puzzle for the competition. That is one of the anomalies in the competition. So if you wanna get a head start on that, it is a more lengthy anomaly that you can get done before the competition. I think we had like one or two submissions. So if you want to start on that, you can. Um, that is the crypto puzzle and that will be linked to anomaly 96. So you can, you can do that and have your answer ready to submit. Um, what happens when there is a tie in scores? Uh, I don't know. I think we'll figure that out if, if that occurs. Um, maybe See, we'll I kind of find it, um, I, we will come to that point when it comes to it, but somehow I highly find this unlikely. So to be be honest with everyone, you know, you have 48 hours and to the point we're not expecting you guys all to be online for that 48 hours, but that that's the, the, the time that the scoreboard is open for you. There is 96 anomalies, um, which quite frankly is way more than really anyone should be able to handle in that 48 hours, even if you were to stay up for 48 hours. Um, so if everyone were to do the exact same ones, we'll come to that bridge. But, um, you know, we do have a handful of people that will be monitoring the, the scoreboard, monitoring the answers to see, um, you know, where and what. But like I said, um, when we get to that point, but at the end of the day, again, the goal of this is not to, you know, and I know that this is a competition and everyone is very concerned about who wins and who doesn't. Um, but the goal here is really to challenge yourself on your own skills. So you will not be able to see what, you know, I would not be able to see what Jennifer's score is. I'm only going to be able to see my own at the end of the day. And not until scores are released, will everyone be able to see what everyone else was. That's a great point. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I saw someone asked, they're completely new to this. W welcome. We're so glad to have you there. We're asking what Kali is. Um, I put a link to that in the chat. Kali Linux is a uh, penetration testing kind of operating system. You can use things like VirtualBox to virtualize it for yourself. Um, it's a Linux distro that you can load on your computer. I would recommend um, getting that loaded up this weekend and playing around with it prior to the competition um, so that you're kind of familiar with it. Um, not all anomalies are going to need Cali, so don't worry or feel intimidated by that. Um, this is going to be a learning experience for everybody involved. No one's going to answer everything correctly. Um, someone can try and prove me wrong, but you know, usually there there either won't be time or you know it'll be out of the person's expertise to be able to answer all of them correctly. Um, someone also asked where they can learn more about the Nice framework. I also linked that in the chat. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, we have some comments about virtual box in here. Uh, can I link to the crypto puzzle that I spoke about? Um, I, I can, I don't know, Amanda, if you can do that in the background. Uh, well, I'm answering. I just added it. So it's up on Twitter. Um, so that's the link that was just given there. And then the question in regards to, are we going to be providing out the correct answers? No, um, we are not. Uh, so again, because we have a plethora of competitions, some of our anomalies and whatnot will get reused dependent on the number of people that do utilize them. So for those people who are asked about the crypto puzzle, please look at the Twitter that was added in here. Um, and even if you don't have a Twitter account, you can still see the photo. It's a public Twitter account. So you should be able to go look at it and download that picture. It's literally the picture is all you need. You don't need access to a Twitter account. And then just save that answer for the start of the competition. And I believe it's Anomaly 96. Let me double check. Yep, it's Anomaly 96. So just save your answer. And then at the start of the competition, you can enter it, uh, your answer into Anomaly 96 and you'll be good to go. Uh, Brandon's asking if he can blog a walkthrough. I mean, we can't we can't say that you can't, you know, you can, you can do that if you'd like. Um, just try not to give out all the answers for us, please. And thank you. But if you want to blog a walkthrough, you're more than welcome to. Um, and then link me because I want to read it. Okay, thumbs up. Cool. Um, do we have any other questions? This is all the questions that have been asked have been great. Um, thank you for being so responsive and interactive. I know it's hard on a virtual platform, but 
um, I really appreciate everybody's questions and you know their enthusiasm. I'm I'm juiced. I hope everybody else is too. This is anomalies are my favorite part of the competition. So um, I will leave that decision to Amanda. Someone asked if we can have an official Slack or Discord set up. Um, I... For sure, um, we can get something set up. I will state um, that that will not be the method in which we will provide support out to. So, um, and the reason why we, I will caveat that um, is that we've done that in years past and it gets unruly very fast. So um, when we set those up, that is entirely for um, you as participants to work with each other, to help each other out. But um, it's not the mechanism in which Argon or any of the staff will work with you guys if there's a problem with something that is going to be a requirement that you work through the help desk. Um, and then, um, we, so we'll get that set up this week. Um, I believe we're going to start moving over to Discord. Um, so I will see if we can get a Discord set up. Otherwise, we'll do a, a Slack because we have worked in Slack prior um for for all of our other stuff um and then otherwise um in regards to all of this like i said in our email your credentials will get sent out to you early next week for the um scoreboard a reminder the scoreboard won't be live so you won't be able to test that until friday but please um you know take it Take the time to save that email that you get. It will likely come from me, um, so make sure you you know you don't block my email quite yet. Um, you know that'll likely come out Tuesday or Wednesday. In that same kind of email, I'll send you the link for the dependency file so that you have that all in kind of one encapsulated email. You know, again, uh, you know we're trusting you. This is an individual competition. While we say you can work with others, you know. Again, the goal of this is for you to really just test yourself. Um, so, you know, this is not meant for you to get a group of friends together and try to all work, you know, as you can. Um, it really is meant to, you know, just, just do your best. That's all we can ask for. So, um, you know, if there's questions, obviously feel free to email us about where we're at, um, but otherwise, um, you know, if you need anything in the meantime, you're more than welcome to email the cyberforce competition at anl.gov. Um, that's monitored all the time. And again, as per the, the rules and whatnot during the competition, it's cyberforce support at anl.gov, and you'll get a help desk ticket set up for us. Alrighty, then, if there's nothing else, um, you know, we can send around that. Um, anomaly kind of a puzzle in an email for everyone just so they have it again. Um, so that, you know, in case people didn't see it, um, you, you have a second chance to take a look at that before next week. And um, if again, there's more questions, definitely feel free to reach out. In the event that you didn't see it, like I said, we have a webinar every single month. The next one for next uh, week, Wednesday is actually on the NICE program. So to Jennifer's point, all of our stuff is mapped to the NICE framework. So if you're interested in learning more, feel free to register for that on the Cyberforce Competition website. Otherwise, I hope you guys all have a really great night and we'll talk to you guys all later. Thank you.